So I'm here to tell you about something that I did last year. Last year I was working for the British NGO Fauna and Flora International as a data scientist when I was given a camera trap survey to analyse. So camera trap surveys are with cameras with motion and infrared sensors are placed in wildlife habitats to take photos of animals that are passing through. So these animals are notoriously shy of humans, which is actually why they still live. So this particular survey had been laid out in a northwestern Vietnam species habitat conservation area near the edge of the Himalayas. We had 78 cameras. They'd been placed in 202 square kilometres of remote forest over 12 months, and FFI wanted to know what animals were out there. <clears throat> With 40,000 images to sift through to, and attempt to identify species, this had been put in the too hard basket. As you can see, most photos were blurry, empty, and sometimes had completely the wrong species in them. <sighs> the original aim of the survey was to discover whether there was clouded leopard in the forest. However, the image collectors had quickly realised that there were none, and so motivation to further analyse these images had lapsed. Dr. Rawson, the Vietnam country director of FFI, handed me the challenge of analysing general species abundance in the forest. This particular photo of a leopard cat, they're about this big and they are gorgeous. And this photo is the one that really hooked me in and wanted, and I just, it's hard to put in words. <laughs> I, I just love this particular photo. So, knowing that I can't even find time to organise my own family photos, I knew I had to take the time to find the most efficient method to organise and then analyse the photos. So, available software for conservation scientists was clunky. It was difficult to use, it was written in Fortran, it gave text outputs and it didn't integrate well with modern analytic software. So, I knew that the photo identification tools on my own phone, Google Photos, Apple iPhotos, that was better than what I was finding. So, I tried their software that was out there, but it just, it wasn't well written, or it was too complex, or it needed other proprietary software, or sometimes it actually just didn't even run on my laptop. Worse was that during my research, I discovered that North American hunters had better software available to them to kill animals. So I knew it was possible. Research is built on what comes before. So after reading and investigating and doing the research, I realised that I needed something better and I was going to have to do it myself. Fortunately, I have a great friend, Chris. Chris and I have now been friends for six years. We met when we worked at an IT company in Australia. These days, Chris is a software developer for a well-known global software company, and after I kept complaining to him about the problem every day for about four months, he finally took pity on me and started writing some software for me. <clears throat> so, Camelot started small. Sure, we had grand plans for everything that Camelot was going to be able to do. We were thinking cloud-based, we'll crowdsource the identifications, we'll run videos. But what we really needed to do was solve the immediate problems that I was facing. So the first problem that I had was that some of the cameras had been reset to three years before the actual survey date. So thousands of photos had the wrong date. So our first version of Camelot resolved that. It identified the photos and then I was able to quickly change them. Then clearly a researcher late at night with not enough caffeine had put a batch of photos into the wrong folder and I didn't know how many more were like that. So we solved that next by determining if the photos in the same folder were coming from the same model of camera. Iteratively, we built Camelot into this, this beautiful interface. 
Now at version 1.2, Camelot can display the images and allow you to pick the species, gender, life state, and life stage really quickly. During the upload process, Camelot can identify if an error has been made or some kind of problem before the photos end up in your database so that you can fix it. Researchers are very protective of their research, and hunters are using research papers to track and kill endangered animals. So the ability for the researchers to keep their information under their control is absolutely critical. So we needed to be flexible. Our software is free, it's open source, it runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, desktop, laptop, server, cloud, any of those things and we knew that that would help people to use it. We've got so many features in this software and we're still building it. So, in our own study, that one study, we discovered that the endangered Alston civet, which is currently known to, um, to be widespread in Laos, is also here in Vietnam, and our particular survey forest is a hotspot for them. So this is pretty groundbreaking news for us. And as a side benefit of those particular photos that we analysed, we now have software that's being used in five countries by 11 research teams, including the Tick Project in New York State. And they've got double the images that we were dealing with. So our most recent goal has been to increase the speed and efficiency of the database so that it can manage two million images with no loss of latency. Two million images is equivalent to 50 years of my original study. I just wish I could find family photo identification software that runs as good as this. So for us, we know that the software wouldn't have been possible without the support of Fauna and Flora International Vietnam and the visionary guidance of Dr. Ben Rawson. Camelot has already made a difference in conservation and the species that we're trying to protect. So, what can you learn from me? I'm out of industry. We were talking about it yesterday. So one, do the research, read up on your issue, find out what other people know, take advantage of the internet. Two, have the belief that you can make a change. That belief is so important. You've got to know that it's possible. So make a difference. Build that software, like Evan mentioned. Change that child's behaviour. Three, get access to an expert. Are you taking advantage of your network? We are so networked, Facebook, Twitter, but are we actually communicating? Are we collaborating? Four, narrow your scope. Solve the smallest problem first. Don't be daunted by the big mountain that's sitting in front of you. Just take that first step. And five, build iteratively. Take little challenges and solve those. Small steps make big change. Thank you. <laughs>